All right, welcome everybody back to Comic Shop Talk. We're here talking about opening a comic shop and this one is gonna be about uh, our biggest day of the year. So every year uh, our city does a, uh, they shut down the main street, uh, the business district. It's called full foliage for us and they put vendors up and down the street, food vendors, craft vendors. It brings about 5,000 or more visitors to our city. We put out two tables. Uh, we take up the spots in front of our shop. Plus, we uh, have a huge sale. This year, we're gonna try for the biggest ever event. We're gonna have Scott Snyder for two uh, hours. Uh, he's gonna be in the area. He was gracious enough to give us two hours to do a signing. We're gonna move the pops that are right here. They're gonna go outside. These are our, like our high-end pops. They're gonna go outside. And we're gonna put a table right here. We're gonna close off the back with the T-shirts. And so he'll be signing right at the front door. It might, you know, if there's gonna be a line, we're hopefully gonna run the line down that way. And hopefully people can get in and out. Logistics of it's a little crazy. This, this video is gonna be a little insane because there's just so much work to be done in this week before the event. You can see that the, there's boxes I just brought in from Baltimore. I have a ton of comic boxes in the basement that have to come upstairs for the sale. We're doing another 50% off. We're bringing up another 20,000 books that haven't been through by our customers. We want to generate a lot of excitement. We also have bins and bins of toys we're going to bring up, and they're also going to be 50% off. Uh, the pops are going to be 25% off. The wall is going to be 25% off. Everything will be on sale. On the fall foliage, we do a week's worth of business in a day, uh, sometimes two weeks. And it is uh, a fantastic day, and there's a you know, what I've always talked about is if you could get a lot of people through your store, you'll do really well. And this is a day that they bring a ton of people into Port Jervis and we get, a, uh, they usually are, you know, wanting to spend money, they have cash. This is a time where I also sell a lot of stuff that I've collected through buying from, you guys know that I use a lot of different sources. My guys that do cleanouts sometimes bring me crazy stuff. It doesn't really fit the store and it sits in the basement until this day and then when we have the two tables out front you know I have car parts and hubcaps and license plates you know just crazy collectible stuff uh, and we save it for that day we are cram packed full of merch we just have so much inventory for days like this this is why you buy up all that in inventory so that you have plenty of stuff to sell we're gonna take some video of the sale so that you can see how it went, if, it, if it's a dud, <laughs> you guys are gonna see if it's a dud. If it's amazing, you probably will see a little bit if it's amazing, but you might not see a lot of it because I'll be so busy. Uh, we have all that space in the back. I've got people, uh, if you hear anybody rustling around, we got a lot of people here helping and working on it, trying to get stuff ready. I've taken four collections in this week. They all have to be prepared to go out for the sale this weekend. It's gonna be Sunday the 24th. The crazy thing is, is Saturday the 23rd, I committed to do a convention about 20 minutes away from here. They gave me a table for free. You know, you know what I say, free is for me. But uh, yeah, if we can make some extra income there uh, and fill up their, their convention so we have more, uh, they have more dealers there, it, it works for both of us. So all of this stuff is getting prepared to get out for that sale. We have all this stuff to get ready, get priced, get uh, taped up because there's been a lot of theft lately. I don't know if you've had this in your shops, but it just seems to be a little bit more than usual. All of our video games are gonna be 25% off. We probably have another 200 to 300 or 400 video games to put out. We just got a huge collection in of very vintage, uh, Odyssey, Atari, ColecoVision, in televisions and that has to get processed and get ready for this sale because this is gonna be our very best opportunity to sell it uh, as fast as we can. So our dollar bin section is crazy. This is all gonna be 50% off, so it's gonna be 50 cents a book. Um, as you can see, it is getting out of control. So I gotta move a lot of these books gonna start doing some conventions for it too, but we're gonna be really aggressive with our pricing so that we can move as much as possible.
the city's huge full foliage event. Yeah, what happened? Well, Ophelia happened. So they uh, canceled the event. They didn't close off the street, but uh, we still held our sale. Scott Snyder was good enough to still stop by. We have some footage of that. You'll see him in there signing for uh, all the folks that uh, came by. We hit our bare minimum of what we wanted to do. Uh, could have been a lot better if we had 5,000 people that would have come for the full foliage event. They've rescheduled it. We'll have a different sale for that. But I just wanted to give an update out on this rainy, cold day. Scott Snyder did show up. He signed for two hours for us. Only like 20 people showed up for him. So if you've ever stood in line at New York Comic Con, at San Diego Comic Con, hell, even at Baltimore Comic Con for Scott Snyder, you could have stood in this line for 10 minutes. It was free, there was no cost to, for autographs. There was no limit, except I oppose the limit of, you know, be kind to others. Don't bring in a short box and stand in the line and then have, you know, go through 50 books. I let them go through the line as many times as they want, but they had to keep getting to the back of the line. So they do about five to 10 books, get to the back of the line. One guy brought in some toys, which were McFarlane toys, but they're the Batmans that Scott Snyder is known for creating flushing out. He's did a recent series on those and the Nightwing Robin series. That was kind of cool. And people got a lot of personal time with Scott. Scott is one of the best guys in the business, such a sweet human being, really intelligent, really giving to his fans and to local comic shops. So he's deeply appreciated for that. A Couple of things you might encounter when uh, you have a big sale like this is uh, dealers will show up. And I have a dealer that I'm friendly with. He's bought stuff from me before. And you know, it's a 50% off sale. So he filled two long boxes and we negotiated on the price and he probably did a little bit better than 50%, probably did somewhere uh, around 65 to 70%. He paid up other uh, books that had been sitting in the basement and stuff like that. There were a lot of $20 and $40 books in, in his long boxes, but God bless him. You know, he came and dropped his money down in my shop and I was, you know, I'm able to take that money and turn it into the lights, the insurance, the rent, stuff like that. If you can't move your your, your books in that price range fast enough, you do have to unload them so that you don't devalue comics. It's actually, I actually feel it's better to sell to another dealer. If you constantly drop all your books, it's nice to do something for your subscribers and your regulars to 50% off and they get a shot at books they wouldn't get a shot at, expensive books or books they wouldn't buy unless they were, you know, half price. That's great. But if they're buying 2000 and they start to be a reseller, it becomes a problem when everybody's a reseller. It also becomes, a they start to devalue. They just wait on the sale. They won't buy a $20 or $40 book if you have a 50% off sale every month. So now the sale is over and you know, there, it was a good sale and we're gonna talk about that. But uh, first, the best part of having a huge sale, cleanup. Yeah, but it's not just a regular cleanup. I'm not just throwing the boxes together and throwing them somewhere. We're actually going to try to uh, separate them into Marvel, DC, and Independence, and then the Independence we're gonna try to separate further down into Publisher, uh, and we're gonna try to alphabetize them because I've talked about this in earlier shows. We're trying to get all of it in to um, Overstreet Access, and so that we'll have an inventory of all of our books and when people ask us, because a lot of time, I had it this weekend, we're having a huge sale and everybody's digging and loving it and one person comes in and go, do you have? <laughs> I was like, I have no idea. And that's the, you know, that's not good business. I really should have an idea. I actually usually actually have a small idea. The thing is, I don't know where it is. I usually know whether I have a comic or not. Uh, being able to put my hand on it is a totally different thing. And I want that to change. And we've been in business nine years, it's time. It's time to move forward, it's time to get better. Uh, and that's what the show is all about, is constantly getting better. Uh, it would be great to be perfect out the gate, and that's why I'm trying to do this show also for everybody new getting into comic shops, uh, that you at least have a guide nine and know <clears throat> what some of the bumps on the road are and what some of the best practices could be uh, I'm gonna bring back some interviews. I, I made some connections in Baltimore and I talked to some people at a recent, I went to a tiny convention held by uh, Garden State uh, Comic Fest. Uh, the guy does about uh, two conventions, he does two conventions a year and he held this smaller one as kind of a fundraiser 
for uh, a horse farm. And it was a beautiful venue, small. The weather was really bad. You know, we kind of showed you that earlier in the, in the video. You know, they canceled our uh, streetwide event. Just it was bad weather and the weather was cold. But, you know, I'm, you know, I made my table value and my time, uh, but not much more than that. I also didn't bring the right stuff. I gauged kind of what, you know, his shows I need to bring to his shows. So it's always great to network out there with other dealers and other promoters. This is a constant grind. If you're not up for that, pick a different thing. But if you really love comics and you love collectibles and you love the community, because you gotta love the community because that's that's your whole business is the community of comics. You or somebody in the store has to be a voracious reader and be reading all the new books so that you can hand sell them and talk to people about them. And, and that's really why we're in this business. I mean, do I really like the older stuff better? For the most part, there's actually been some stuff that's been amazing recently that I that really blows away a lot of the older stuff, but that's because I have a more mature mind. But I don't see that kind of stuff that really hooked me on comics when I had a younger mind. So I'm hoping that changes. Keep reading comics and uh, open a comic shop. <laughs>